Well, as you probably uh, might have noticed, my name is not Dmitry Dolgov, um, who unfortunately couldn't be here uh, because of uh, some visa problems. So uh, he's given me some slides, um, and I'm going to run through those, and then I have some slides of my own. Um, <coughs> basically, the, uh, uh, the history of uh, this uh, development is that uh, uh, Dimitri wrote uh, an extension, which, is, uh, which you can find out there, called JSON-BX, which uh, uh, can be used with uh, Postgres 9.4 uh, to provide some, uh, some needed operators uh, for JSON-B that we really didn't get time to do in the 9.4 uh, timeframe, um, <coughs> and particularly things which will let you uh, change parts of a JSON document um, instead of having to uh, provide a whole new document. Um, Dimitri wrote, wrote this and published it, and uh, uh, I, I helped him to do some of that. And uh, then I took that and uh, adapted it uh, somewhat for, uh, 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 to, to, to be built into Postgres. Um, he then adjusted it a little more, and then after some review, we. Uh, 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 Petra Jelinek also uh, uh, rewrote parts of it and got committed, and then we had we ran into a couple of moments of controversy, uh, but nevertheless, I think we've actually ended up with a pretty good result. Um, so I'm going to run through those uh, features uh, and, and show you what we've got. How many people here are uh, have have used uh, JSON in Postgres? Fair number. How many have used JSON-B in Postgres? Still a fair number. Okay. How many are aware of the difference between JSON-B and JSON-B? Not everybody. Okay. So basically, the difference is that uh, JSON-B is stored in a, uh, a a decomposed format, which is much faster to process, um, whereas uh, JSON, the, uh, the plain JSON uh, type is stored as a piece of text as it's fed in, including all the white space. And any time you need to do anything with it, uh, you need to reparse the, uh, the JSON. Whereas with JSON-B, um, it's, it's, because it's stored in this decomposed format, there is no need to, to reparse anything. And so um, we can do uh, a heck of a lot more with it. Um, in general, if you're processing JSON, you want to be using JSON-B rather than uh, the plain JSON type. Uh, there are a couple of exceptions, but that's generally the rule. Okay, so um, the JSONB thing started as uh, uh, an extension by uh, uh, Oleg and Theodore, who I'm, sure I'm surprised Oleg's not here. Um, it started by, as a, um, they started to develop a nested type of H store. There was a um, this was discussed, and eventually we decided that rather than uh, a nested H store, what we really wanted was to have uh, uh, a JSON type which uh, uh, which uh, used this, that structure because our users are much, much, much more familiar uh, in general with uh, JSON than with the uh, uh, much less uh, standardized um, syntax of H store. Okay, so uh, that came about, and one of the things that we got with uh, with the JSON binary type was uh, that uh, certain searches were uh, supported with gin indexes, uh, as we saw with um, uh, saw in Oleg and Alexander's talk. <coughs> so, but here's what we've got at the, uh, uh, up to now. We can, you, we can get an element at an arbitrary path, but we can't delete one, we can't ap update one, and we can't add a new one. So here are the new features. Uh, one of the things that we, we also uh, have provided is a way of formatting uh, JSONB because when we, when we uh, decompose it, we dissolve away all the white space. So if you just output plain JSONB, you get this great big long string of stuff, and so we've provided a function which will format it nicely for you. 
So that's the first new feature. The next feature is, uh, is this, um, JSONB set. And basically this will uh, set an, uh, an element. The second parameter uh, is a path in the first parameter. And the third parameter is what, what it is that will be set. So we can see here in this thing we're going to, s where n is null in the source document, we're going to replace that null with an array of 1, 2, 3, and there's our result, n of 1, 2, 3. Now, there's, a, there's actually a fourth parameter here, which is, uh, we, we've changed the default since Dimitri wrote these slides, but the fourth parameter, which actually defaults to true now, says that if that path doesn't exist, if the last element particularly of the path doesn't exist, then we're going to create it. So here, there is no C element in the source document, and here we've created one. If that parameter had been f false instead of true, we would not have done anything. We would simply have returned the original document because the path doesn't exist. Yeah? Um, with this, does it end up reordering? The or the the ordering of in JSON B is um, canonical. Okay. All right. So you have no you have no control over the physical order that the keys are stored in. Okay. All right. All right. They're they're stored. You know, if you have an object with keys A and B, and another one with keys B and A, they will be stored identically. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. <coughs> So the path is an array of uh, elements, it's a, 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 an array of text, and if, if, the, if the target ob thing is uh, an object, then it's taken as a, a, a key field, a field name, and if it's a, uh, an array, then it's taken as an array index. Um, we support uh, negative indexes, which basically count back from the last element. So if you're, <coughs> so minus one designates the last element in the array, minus two the second last, and so on. So essentially you can do things like, uh, uh, as we'll see later on, you can do things like array push and that sort of, and, and shift and so on. So there's, here, here, here's another example where we've got a more complex path Essentially, we're going to replace this 2 here with 1, 2, 3, and you can see that happening. Um, and here we're replacing the, um, the, last, the, the last element of this array under B because we've got a minus 1, and so that turns into a 4. Okay? Now we also have this function, uh, uh, we have a bunch of JSONB uh, delete functions. In fact, uh, we, don't, we haven't actually documented JSONB delete because in normal uh, Postgres form we don't actually uh, document, the f for the most part, the functions that underlie operators and we actually have, an op we have a couple of delete operators, as we'll see. But nevertheless, you can delete... Uh, here, this text thing, this must refer to a field in an object. And you can see that it's, it just removes the A element. Um, if, it's, if you pass it an integer, it will delete that array element. Again, negative indexing works there. And if you give it a path, then it will delete the element designated by that path. So the operators for the, for, uh, for the path, we'll see the path uh, uh, one in a minute, but, but for the plane, if you just give it a text or an integer, you just use the minus operator and it will take away the, that, which is kind of a nicer notation than using JSONB delete. 
to avoid any ambiguity, we, oops, we're not showing that maybe. Um, to, there's a, I'll, sh I'll show you in a second what the uh, operator is. Where, where you want a, to delete something with a path, instead of saying minus, you say um, minus hash. Right, the pound sign, Octothorpe. Um, and that's because otherwise we run into uh, also, uh, we run into ambiguity problems, and you have to do nasty casts and that sort of stuff. Whereas if we, since we use a different operator name, um, you can uh, you don't have to do that. You can just pass it an array, a literal with a path. So this cast here is in fact unnecessary. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the final thing we've got is that you can actually concatenate a couple of objects. Uh, you can concatenate an array, an array with an object and an object with an array and, a, and some scalars and stuff. Uh, basically, um, fairly much in the same way that you can um, uh, concatenate H stores and other things like that and arrays. This is a shallow concatenation. Uh, there was uh, some, uh, uh, some discussion about whether or not it should be, but that's what we, that's what we have. Uh, an item that is uh, still on the to-do list is to have um, a deep merge operation. I'll be talking about that in a little while. So there's another example of the concatenation using the, 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 concat the uh, two bars is the concatenation operator in the same way that it is with arrays and H stores and uh, some other objects. Strings. So did we decide to keep two bars for shallow concat in yes. five? Yes. Okay. I lost track of that. No, that, no that's, that's what we're doing. Yeah, there's no. This is not going away. Uh, if we if we implement a, a deep merge operation, there'll be uh, either a function or uh, a different operator. Okay, so plans for the future. There are still some, as uh, he says here, there are some uh, missing things. Um, this is basically to say, well. Uh, delete this element from uh, um, from Jason B. What has he done there? Oh, it's deleting the common elements in effect. Um, or an intersection operator which will basically uh, uh, find the elements in col common. Deep merge that we took, we uh, we discussed a second ago, um, and possibly some more uh, um, uh, more elegant syntax. I, I'm not sure that we need terribly much to do there, but um, I don't, how many of you are here for uh, Oleg and Alexander's talk? Some. Um, there is this uh, module which uh, they've created called JS Query. It's, uh, it's available on GitHub. Uh, it has a uh, fairly elegant uh, uh, language, somewhat like uh, the TS Query language, which can be used for querying JSONB. Um, it's got uh, uh, some, some nice index support for uh, quite a lot of it. And um, you can express uh, uh, express quite complex queries quite well in this, uh, in this uh, language that they've invented. Um, of course, if, they go, if we get to where they want to be, then we'll, be, we'll have support at a, at a SQL level rather than having to have this uh, specialised language. Uh, but meanwhile, you know, that's probably uh, a good couple of years out at, at best. Uh, so JS Query is probably your best way to go for now. 
So that's the conclusion of Dimitri's uh, uh, talk. Um, <coughs> here's, here's his conclusion, uh, which basically says we're continuing to work on stuff. He's going to keep adding stuff to uh, probably to the JSON BX um, uh, ex extension, and uh, um, he'll probably come out with a version of it for uh, you know, with some new facilities for Postgres 9.5. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'll take some questions. I mean, you, you ask questions any time, but that's... Let me go to... Hello. Come on. That's odd. Why did it do that? Not to my knowledge. Um, that's really weird. What the heck has it done here? If I oh, it's switched which screen it thinks is your computer. Oh, wait, no, it's displaying the display.